and welcome to today's video and today we have something rather special to take a look at. If you cast your mind back to the video where I was looking at the 1981 Ferguson brochure I made comments of a rather interesting little cassette deck which I really like the look of and um, a few weeks later I managed to find one on eBay that was boxed and here it is the Ferguson Revolver cassette recorder and radio. Even comes with, inside the box, we have this accessories enclosed piece of card, which is quite nice. I assume that was for the accessories. Um, this, excuse the creaky noise, I need to get a new chair. This is a guide to safety which was uh, included with it. You've got the old Fawn logo there, Fawn Consumer Electronics. A few other little bits of safety information on there as well. And we also have the operating instructions. It's the 3T12. There's the rear of it with the classic Fawn logo. Um, that information is the person that owned this at some point. That is the original receipt. Um, apparently Wigfalls was, or is, or was a company in the north that had a number of shops around sort of the Midlands and the north. And uh, this branch was in Lincoln, I think. Or was it? I don't know. The chap that owned it lived in Lincoln, but... Um, I'm not sure if the branch he went to was in Lincoln. So here are the instructions. And the other thing it also does is also a little PA amplifier as well. It's not particularly loud, but that is one of the features that it does seem to have. Now, I saw this little picture here of this little microphone and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I've got one of those somewhere. I'm sure I have. And it turns out I do. This one's very similar to the one that's pictured. The microphone itself is, if you look very carefully at the top here, it's made by Realistic. So I'm assuming that it's just a generic microphone that was um, rebadged by various different manufacturers. And there we go, that's the rear of that again. So let's move the box out of the way. Let's find a plug. Uh, this is the one that came with it. So that's uh, actually looks like a plug from the early 80s. You can tell this is back in the era when people had to wire their own plugs. So if you look in there, you can see that's the typical sort of job you used to get when uh, people wired their own plugs. Never put it onto the black bit, they always seem to clamp it down on the two wires, so I'll probably correct that at some point, but it's not exactly urgent. So let's take a look at the, before we plug it in, let's have a look at the unit itself. So on this side we've got a large bass speaker, we have the tuner selector which has long wave, medium wave and VHF. If we spin around to this side we have the tuner dial have a couple of switches here, one for PA, one for mic. PA volume control here. Uh, we have ear, mic, remote. So there's three connectors there, which quite interestingly, I wonder if this could have been used with um, um, a home computer, because a lot of home computers came with um, uh, audio cables that had the remote controller the mic controller and the earpiece controller. So I do wonder if this could have been used with a home computer. Spinning round to this side, we have quite a nice PA logo, system five watts. We have the cassette, which obviously, if I find the stop eject button, opens like so. There's another speaker under this grill, which is sort of like a mid-range affair. And we have the battery compartment, complete with, a little fake screw so to match the symmetry of the screw here 
It's got a little fake screw on the cover there, which is quite nice. Nice little uh, bit of aesthetic. Aesthetic, rather. In here we have space for... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight batteries, it would seem. And I'm guessing, looking at the size of that, that's probably... UM2 or equivalent, so HP11 slash UM2 or equivalent, I'm guessing D cells, looking at the size of it. Around here we have the power connector, also got this nice little carry handle as well, which is quite nice. On the top we have all of the various function controls. Uh, we have selector for off or tape, radio or sleep. Monitor off, low, high. Tone, volume and function. So VHF, medium wave, long wave. We have a loudness button which basis boosts the bass. And then all of your standard cassette control, transport controls along the top. And this little dome microphone which is quite nice. So, just put that down to there. Let's make sure it's in the off position at the moment. Let's grab this and plug it in. There we go, so that plugs in easily enough. Put that there. So there would have been an FM aerial as well, but that's broken off at some point, so that could be something if I manage to get hold of one, something I could put back onto there, but to be honest, because it is working, I don't really want to do anything with it. Quite happy to leave it as it is. There we are, so that's radio on VHF. And let's see if we can tune it into something. the loudness button. By example, and showing that it is possible and that you should only judge people on their talent and yeah, what they're working rather to nicely actually. Communicate so let's go to tape mode. I need to get a bit of switch cleaner into these as they're a little bit uh, crackly. I'm actually going to see if I can make this PA function work. So we've got mic and the little one into remote. Test, test, does that work? That needs a bit of switch cleaner testing. Oh, uh, oh yes, that, that seemed to work. Ouch. Okay, so test, test, test. Oh dear, yeah, that does seem to work. <laughs> Let's put it on to sleep. So sleep does seem to keep the radio going. So that's on mic at the moment. Test, 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 test. So nothing on that. Let's put it back onto tape. Testing. Oh, so it does seem to work, but the microphone is not very sensitive. If I take the cap off, I can actually do something with it here, and 
as you can hear, I can actually use the PA function. If I turn that up, that makes it higher, but that's a bit distorted to bring it down. It's a little bit better. That's a bit better there. I'll take the loudness off. That's better. So, testing, three, two, one. And, oh, that's actually better. That's working a lot better. So, on this microphone, you do have to keep it very close to your mouth because it's not particularly sensitive. And if you switch off, that turns off the microphone completely. If I put it back on, so on, and there it is, on it goes. The cassette function also appears to work absolutely fine. Uh, I don't have a cassette to hand at the moment, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. Unless I can find one. Oh, hang on, that's gone off again. Test. If it's... I won't be able to demonstrate that. Unless I can find one. No, nope, can't see any. But it does work. I have tested it and it is working well. So, let's take this microphone out. Or well, let's switch it off. So that is off. That's off. Eject the microphone. Put the PA volume back down to zero. Do need to get some switch cleaner on that. Put it back to radio. Slightly weak signal. Let's tune it in. Try some of this. There we go. It's a bit of switch cleaner. So these knobs should come out as well, so I should be able to go into there, like so. doing this with my jumper this is really bad practice <laughs> but there you go that's our uh, volume control one down to the bottom out you can volume control you know you want to there she goes that's that one there we are. bit of a spray into there And finally that one. There we go. Excellent. Right, let's put these back on now. So we have tone, which uh, is this one. So there's no actual little detents in there. You have to line it up yourself. So we'll put it on maximum and then wind it back down so it's midpoint about there. The volume control is currently on minimum, so we will line that up there. There we go, that's our volume control. We'll just cycle these because we have obviously put in the switch cleaner. Move these a little bit as well. There we go. And function that was 
on VHF, so we'll line it up with VHF, uh, like so. Press that in. There we go, and cycle that as well. So coming around to this side, let's see if we can do anything with this. Ideally I need a little nozzle on this to be able to get right into there, but that'll have to do for the minute. There we go. Right, so the radio back on. Dirty there, you can hear it a little bit more into there. Let's give me a few minutes for this and see what I can do. Fetch spire in the at uh, the distance as well. Very picturesque. Let's keep our eyes on the game. And after a little bit more of switch cleaning, it appears to have worked. So just very, very dirty contacts. Bought on by the fact that this unit is 40 years old pretty much. Situation is Josh just level with the edge there of the area. Go. We just put the tone Certainly, and I can already see Carl midway. Dickinson standing over it. Got the loudness and, uh, button on as well. A couple of times, of course, the first game of the season against Kings Lynn, a great ball in from a similar sort of position. Try some of the other stations. So that one works. Let's get out of the range of that one. So all you need to do is bit of classic. <laughs> And then up into the weird frequencies on FM, which I don't know if anyone actually uses. So, medium wave. With Wick and Wanderers, of course, the game we're all really bothered about. Yeah. Well, I mean, good, strong signal on medium wave. Yeah, it's working. Anything on long wave? Well, there's something. There we go. And off. And there we have it. I'm rather pleased with it, to be honest. It was um, a nice little find and um, certainly uh, something I was quite pleased to be able to get hold of, especially the fact that it was boxed. And uh, the box is not really in bad order either. Not bad at all. So, 
that's just a little play around for that little set. If you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.